Hi, so I'm presenting the IBM A2 box, which is uh, an extension for SPM, a well-known new imaging software. And first, we'll have an overview of meta-analysis in new imaging. So why would we like to do that? And what's the difference between the two uh, main type of meta-analysis, namely coordinate-based and image-based? We'll then focus on image-based meta-analysis and have a look at the different approaches that are available to do that. And finally, we'll um, quickly review some results uh, investigating the validity of these different approaches in the context of neuroimaging. So first, meta-analysis in neuroimaging. So why would we do meta-analysis? In a typical neuroimaging study, you start by uh, designing an experiment, you acquire some data, you analyze it, and you end up with some results. If we look at the literature, we have uh, plenty of studies, and a meta-analysis is simply an analysis that will combine the results of previous studies to uh, get new results. In the context of new imaging, the main reason for doing that is to increase power, because it is well known that uh, most studies have a small sample size. So increasing the power might help us in discovering more subtle effects or uh, getting more robust results. But conducting a meta-analysis is also a way to uh, combine results in a novel fashion from uh, previous studies. So if we have a closer look at what's, what's the data available in a typical neuroimaging study at the different stages, so when we start our experiment, we have, well, no imaging data. Then after the data acquisition phase, we have about, in a typical study, 500 megabytes per subject, leading to 20 gigabytes if we uh, take a typical study with, 20, with 40 subjects. By the time uh, we, have, we got our results, we have five times more data, about 2.5 gigabytes per subject. But when we publish our results, the data that we actually share is very, very limited. So if we have a closer look at what are we sharing exactly, so first we have a qualitative view of the detections, like 2D figures, but what's really uh, the quantitative part of the results in a new imaging study is usually a table displaying the x, y, z coordinates of the local maxima and a value of statistics at these different points. In fact, these could be uh, represented as a brain volume with really sparse value corresponding to this local maxima. So currently, if I want to uh, perform a meta-analysis based on published results, the only thing I can do is to combine this really sparse map into a coordinate-based meta-analysis. But there is an increasing interest towards data sharing, and we could imagine that if in the near future we share more um, results when reporting a new imaging study, we would be able to perform an image-based meta-analysis. And this has been shown to be the optimal approach because you take into account all the value brain-wise instead of focusing on a few um, peaks. So, when we look at image-based meta-analysis, the gold standard in a statistical point of view, so first, uh, if we look at the typical study, we start with one subject, we have pre-processed data, we fit a model, estimate, and we get contrast and standard error map. We can threshold these maps or a statistical map and get detections. We usually have several sub subjects, and at the level of the study, we combine the contrast and standard error maps to get a new contrast and standard error map at the study level. Again, special didn't give us the detection. Now, when we have several study and we want studies and we want to perform a meta-analysis, we do exactly the same approach. We go back to the contrast and standard error map and combine them into a new uh, model fitting and estimation. So, in fact, the gold standard approach is a three-level approach with a subject level, a study level, and a meta-analysis level. And to be able to do uh, the meta-analysis level, which is what we are interested in, we need the contrast and standard error maps for each study, and we need to make sure that these are expressed in the same units. 
but that's uh, where it's getting a bit difficult. The units of the contrast uh, maps will depend on a lot of parameters, including the scaling of the data at the subject level, the scaling of the predictor at the subject and the study level, and the scaling of the contrast at the subject and the study level. On top of that, contrast estimate and standard error map are, in fact, rarely shared. So uh, there are, in fact, other statistical approach that can be used in the context of image-based meta-analysis. They are known to be suboptimal, but they are based on uh, limited data, for instance, on the Z statistic. So instead of sharing the contrast and standard um, error map, we could only share the Z statistic map. So other approach are based on the Z statistic and the sample size, and so on. But it's important to keep in mind that all of these approaches are suboptimal. They are based on restrictive assumptions. And in order to use them in neuroimaging, we need first to check that those assumptions are verified in neuroimaging or that those approaches are robust to violation to their assumptions. And that's where uh, we introduced the IBML toolbox, which is a plugin for SPM available on GitHub that provides an implementation of all the methods that I've been presenting in the previous slide. So just to give you uh, a small view of some results that we got using the toolbox, so we investigated 21 pain studies in healthy subjects and we combined them in a one sample test. So what you have on the left of this picture is the gold standard approach. And um, the approach is presenting on the gray background are the one that uh, takes into account a possible study, heter heterogeneity between studies, while the one on the white background are approaches that uh, assumes that there is no between study variance. Even qualitatively from this image, you can see that the approach on the white background that ignore between study variance tends to overestimate the statistics, leading to uh, higher rate of false positive. So in conclusion, we have presented uh, the IBMA toolbox. The idea is to support uh, future image-based meta-analysis. In practice, it's quite difficult to perform the gold standard approach, which is a third level mixed effect general linear model. The IBM e toolbox is here to provide different approach. And um, we also have quantitative results that I'll be happy to discuss with you uh, at my poster. And we also plan on having, uh, in investigating other models, including uh, two sample analysis. So I would be happy to answer any questions. Do you think, uh, I mean, this also requires some standardization of labeling what is a pen study? And, you know, and you, you need to know, have a kind of a repository or registry of like a, this is an fMRI analysis of a pen study, this is an fMRI analysis of a working memory study, and, and so on. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I mean, so is there any plan to sort of help with that? And, uh, I know you're working on. Possible things to do that. But, uh, do you, do you, I mean, do you see that as a main impediment for the for the for the meta analysis, or do you see? Uh, I mean, we we clearly need more tools to be able to define our studies in a more standard way in order to be able to do meta analysis, and this is only part of the story. 